Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Before we get into our content, which is about the beautiful Yak vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, I'd like to do a massive shout out and thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Yes, I want to take a minute to recognize the game is actually doing very well in the mobile gaming world. I do play it myself and this month is Raid's two year anniversary and the schedule is absolutely packed with amazing events. They've got six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments running from March 1st all the way until the middle of April and all of them with insane prizes to win. They're launching their very first ever clan to clan versus tournament, giving players a chance to completely directly go against one another to see who comes out on top. Now, being it is the two year anniversary, I thought I'd answer myself a bit of an anniversary question and it was given to me as where is the favorite place I like to play Raid, and personally, I actually enjoy playing Raid whilst my videos format for creating content for you guys. Second question was, if I could be any champion in the game, who would it be and why? And I'd probably be the Norog, because I am a gigantic fat pig at the moment. I have totally let myself go in the world of fitness and uh, healthy eating, but it allows me to play this game more, so I can't complain. If you want to get a head start in Raid, you have to click in the description box below or go to my code that will give you a free epic champion known as Jotan, who is amazing for the Doom Tower, by the way. You'll get 100,000 silver, 50 gems, and three ancient shards. You can summon awesome champions as you get them in game. All of this treasure will be waiting for you here. And I do have to mention that the rewards will only be available for the next 30 days and only for new players. It's that easy, guys. Just check out that description box for the link, and I'll see you in game. So let's get back to talking about this incredible vertical takeoff and landing Russian fighter. Now it was a bit of a shock for the United States when in 1984 the CIA announced that it had discovered a Soviet base that had a new type of aircraft with a vertical takeoff and landing. Until then the Soviet Union had only succeeded in fielding the much overrated aircraft the Yak-38 Forger. The shots from the American satellite clearly showed a device of a size larger than its western counterpart, the Harrier, and above all, very surprising aesthetic. NATO gave this aircraft the designation of Freestyle, making it not an experimental aircraft, but a fighter. For Freestyle, it all began in 1975. It was given to the manufacturer of Yakolev and to find a replacement for the Yak-38. Indeed, to his production, this light ADAV fighter bomber did not give full satisfaction to the staff of the company that he was in charge of, so it was decided that the plane had to be replaced. Yakolev was naturally selected to be given the importance of the work of this design office on vertical flight, notably thanks to the Yak-36 freehand prototype. Yakolev always considered the Yak-38 to be a transitional aircraft intended to allow him to gain experience on ADAVs, and the Soviet Navy itself found it quite limited, frankly. This is why, as early as 1975, the Soviet Navy asked Yakolev to study a supersonic ADAV intended for the air defense of the fleet. It had to have maneuverability and a Fazatron S-41M Zook radar, that of the MiG-29 but with a smaller antenna, and the armament comparable to that of the fighters of the first line. For Yakolev, that meant coming back to the center stage among fighter jet builders. No less than 10 engineers were assigned to the project, which received military designation of the Yak-41. More than 50 concepts were studied from 1977. Propulsion was the main problem encountered. A twin jet formula was normally considered and then abandoned because of the role of by loss of which the reactors are actually given for the jet propulsion. Engineers then headed for a single R79V300 engine with a square shaped vector thrust nozzle such as that would be later found on the F-22. It was very complex to design, and a vector nozzle, but in circular shape, was finally adopted and placed between the two beams supporting the fins. Two RD-41 booster reactors completed the system. The parts of fuselage exposed to the gas from the reactors are made of titanium, and 26% of the airframe was of composite materials, and the rest was aluminum or aluminium alloys. Hovering was limited to only 2.5 minutes. The Yak-41M was intended designation for a possible series of multiple upgrades. It would have been equipped with the Apex and improvements especially in avionics. It would have been more versatile with anti-ship and anti-ground attack capability than the original Yak-41, and its development was decided in 1985. Prototypes were built on this basis. The Yak-41M was to receive a heads-up display coupled to a helmet sight, as on the MiG-29. 
The cockpit was pressurized and conditioned, but was very forward, and the view to the rear was limited because of the dorsal ridge. It had triple redundant electrical flight controls. The first drafts of the new prototype were quickly ready, among other things that really Yakolov engineers were already working on similar programs. The aim was to develop an aircraft not only capable of hitting quickly and far away, but also ground targets, but also performing that of air defense with interception missions from long distance. This program was much more ambitious than any other concerning VAVs, and the aircraft was expected to be largely supersonic, if not bisonic. This is how the first prototype was built. Now in total, four prototypes were built, including a static test cell and propulsion test bench. Only 48 or 48.3 respectively coded 75 and 77 were intended to fly and were painted grey. The static test was started in 1986 and it was on this date that the project was detected by the West and designated as the Ram T. In the spring of 1988, it was designated the Freestyle. An inaugural flight took place on March 9, 1987 and at the controls was Andre A. Stitzin. The second prototype flew for the first time on April 12, 1989. The aircraft actually went supersonic in the summer. The first true vertical takeoff took place on December 29, 1989, and the first transition on June 13, 1990, to both vertical landing and takeoff to runway takeoff. Tests showed huge improvements on handling as the progression of the development aircraft came along. On September 26, 1991, Sitsin made the first vertical landing on the Admiral Gushkov, formerly Baku. One of the prototypes was actually damaged by a hard landing on October 5th, but was repaired very quickly. When Sitsin broke the 12 records in April 1991, the Yak-41 received the designation as the Yak-141. Its actual military designation then was classified. The designation Yak-141 remained though, and particularly in the West. It was also presented as an export designation. It was the single-seat, three-jet monoplane. It had very innovative double-tail units, allowing the low-speed flight and transition sequences between vertical flight and horizontal flight. The most powerful engine allowed propulsion, while the other two smaller had more main use for the lift and phases of takeoff landing. The aircraft did have a fully retractable tricycle landing gear and had a single steerable nozzle, while the Forge and the Harrier have two. Of course, when developing such a complex machine, there was issues and problems that took place. And unfortunately, one of the flights with the prototypes was completely destroyed. And the AVMF prime contractor for the program decided to put a stop to testing. And the first prototype went directly to a different base for testing and for storage. This early retirement started for several months until September 1992, when the manufacturer decided to present the aircraft in flight at the Farnborough Air Show in Great Britain. In front of an audience of specialists and aviation enthusiasts, the aircraft did wonders, especially compared to the AV-8Bs of the US Marine Corps. But this demonstration only had a temporary effect on the life of the machine. Indeed, the manufacturer did sign an agreement in February 1993 with the South African aircraft manufacturer Atlas, the manufacturer of the Cheetah fighter bomber, in order to offer the aircraft to South African Air Force, but to also various non-aligned countries unable to acquire that of the American materials. Unfortunately for this aircraft though, once Sequoia and Mikhail Gurevich gave up the MiG-29 and Su-27s in naval versions respectively, this aircraft was doomed. Indeed, Russia was seeking to acquire a classic naval air force aircraft like the United States and France had, but it was beginning to be the end of the ADAVs in former USSR. However, the fall of USSR meant that the Soviet Navy really had no more funds to devote to this project. The project was therefore officially abandoned in November 1991 when deliveries were scheduled for 1993. The Yak-41 program was completely stopped in January 1996, 21 years after its launch. This plane that was really scaring off the Western staff was just another flash in the history of the Cold War. But a flash in the pan which had broken 12 international flight records on ADAVs, 10 of which were previously held by the British Aerospace and McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II. The freestyle prototype can now be seen at the Russian Flight Test Museum in Zvosky. In short, the Yak-41 joined very close circle of the supersonic ADAVs and represented a real technological advance. But the fall of the USSR and a lack of funds decided otherwise. It was confronted with the appearance of the naval versions of the Su-27 and MiG-29 and Su-25 and therefore doomed. 
its export attempts were obviously limited, if at all. In addition, it certainly served Lockheed Martin the inspiration for its future F-35. So there you have it, folks. The rather incredible Yak-41 and 141 program, which, just like many things during the time of the Cold War, was given a lot of money, a lot of time, dedication, and engineering marvel to only be dropped at the heels because of, well, a multitude of things. But an incredible aircraft, and, you know, not without its faults. When you're developing something that's supposed to take off from the ground and go vertically up in the time of days that they were doing it, uh, it's a huge feat, and an engineering and aviation marvel in the grand scheme of things especially with breaking so many records and we all know of the harrier jump jet and how important it is but in terms of russia's capability they had a very good go at it uh, now hats off to the engineers and designers who actually went for producing this aircraft i hope you enjoyed today's video please feel free to leave me a like and feel free also to uh, follow me on uh, patreon or go to my paypal site for those of you who have been supporting and donating towards my page thank you so much for doing so i really do appreciate it and once again go check out the link in the description box below for any uh, raid shadow legends gameplay you want to get involved in i hope to see you next time and if you do want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future click that little bell by the subscribe button catch you later guys bye bye